You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Hey, friends. Welcome back to Highly Unlikely. I'm your host, Alex Getlin, and this is the show where I get my friends high and teach them about a subject that seems highly unlikely but is 100% true. Now, my guest today is a hilarious comic, Mateen Stewart. Yeah. And this episode, we're going to learn about the ancient Aztecs. Oh, dude. For real? That's yeah. like apocalypto shit? Well, that was the Mayans, but same part of the world. All right, so there's the Mayans, the Incans, and the Aztecs. Those three yeah. different people. Yes, and the Olmec is another. There's actually very many, but those are the ones that we know a lot about. Yeah, because yeah. one of the dudes was named Tupac. <laughs> was that true? There was the Incas, a... yeah. Oh, interesting, yeah. One of the brothers. Um, so, yeah, before we get into that, I ask everybody at the top, because yes. it's kind of a weed show. I mean, it's more like a fun learning show, but yeah. there's a little weed involved. Yes. Are you a regular weed smoker, occasional? What's uh, your affiliation? I, I smoke I smoke weed on occasion. Okay. Like, like I don't, I'll, I always have weed. Yeah. But I don't always smoke weed. I usually smoke weed with other people. Like I'm not right. gonna sit around my house and smoke weed. And that's why I kind, I'm kind of mad about <laughs> California making it legal. Cause like my friend, cause my friend was, was, when all they would come out of town, I was like the weed guy. Like I, was oh, like, I right. like took away some of that mystique. That's so funny. <laughs> and they could just, they can just go get it themselves at the store. I used to be like, yo, I need some weed and I'm going to make it happen. But Right. You don't want to pivot into, well, yeah, anything yeah. else is just like, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, all right, cool. So what do you know about the ancient Aztecs? Um, they're in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, they uh, like to build shit. Sort um, of. Yeah. <laughs> the they, did, they did. Yeah. We'll get Aztecs, into that. Aztecs, they are the mascot for the San Diego State there you University. go. University. <laughs> um, that's about it, bro. Yeah. Well, I'm going to teach you a lot. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm kind of high right now, so. Yeah. That's the that's the fun of the I show. Know, I was like, uh, I'm not going to be high. And then yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Are you doing yeah. a, a headlining week? Are you performing this weekend? Is that what you're about? No, to? I'm I'm going to be in um, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I okay. do um, I do this feature uh, workshop. Oh, for cool. Colleges. That's great. Called Comical Race Theory. So nice. So we're going to like showcase that for all these 19 year olds yeah because we were we were smoking outside and then Mateen's like halfway through the joint he's like you know i gotta fly in a bit let's fit let's yeah, go in yeah now. <laughs> yeah yeah because i don't need to be like in my head on the plane high <laughs> in lax yeah. I hate lax is terrible sober like yeah. hot yeah that's the worst thing to go anywhere like on a plane high huh? all right so the aztecs they were one of the many very well-known mesoamerican uh, native cultures mm -hmm. from that time in the world and aztec is sort of an amorphous term the people who um, we think of as Aztecs in general, they actually refer to themselves as the Mexica. That's where the name Mexico comes from. Oh, like, Mexica. Yeah, Mexica. like Mexica, like Mexica, Mexica, like Mexico, right? Okay. Aztec more refers, it was actually the Europeans came up with that word. It um, references the native city of Aslan, I think is what it's called. Aslan? Um, yeah, it's, it's spelled A. Well, this is like how it's spelled in English. I don't yeah. know how they spelled it. A Z T L A N. Okay, Aslan. Yeah, and what that is so the legend of what um, the people we know as the Aztecs, what they say, is that they traveled down from what we know as northern Mexico okay. and they settled into what is now Mexico City. And oh, yes. Okay, so I've been to Mexico City. Right. So. But so the their home origin area was Aslan. That was in northern Mexico. Okay. And we don't know a lot about that. But the kind of main group that makes up the Aztecs, it's also known as the Triple Alliance because it was three city states that were sort of unified, and they all spoke what was known as not the. And I'm going to preface. There's a lot of words here. I don't totally know how to pronounce. I'm sorry. Just I'm gonna, say it. <laughs> I'm Believe do, it. Believe I'm going to do my best. Um, they all spoke the. Nahatul language? Nahatul. Yeah, Nahatul language. Nahatul. Yeah. And the story of the Aztecs is they traveled down from their native city, Adslan, I believe is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, a roaming people, but they were really um, ruthless warriors. That was kind of their skill set. They were very good at fighting and waging war. So were they just fight? Who were they fighting? They were just fighting other? Other tribes, other yeah. Tribes? For very specific reasons we're going to get to in just a okay. second. But the story goes that they settled in what is now Mexico City. The city is known. Oh, man, I wrote this down. They find it. here we go. Um, Tenochil Tenochiltian, I believe, is how they probably pronounce it differently. But that was the city. They, they definitely called it. do. <laughs> Tenochiltian. Yeah, I, don't, I can't even see it. And they right. know they do. <laughs> yeah, but you got but it's now Mexico City. They came there and they asked people there, hey, can we also settle with you? We're warriors. We can protect you. That's our skill to provide. And they're like, yeah, we could use some protection. And then fast forward, and they just killed everybody and took over. Oh, wow. <laughs> As that happens to go. Dude, that is, 
whoever has the biggest stick. Yeah, that <laughs> that tends to be, um, you know, how a lot of things work. At least in human history, but yes. in that part of the world. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but at the height, in the 16th century, they had about up to as many as 10 million people spread across 500 little towns. And they had a, a reign for about 200 years. So they just was just running shit. For they were running shit. Years. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you connect with 10? Like, I don't know. How do these, How do we know it's 10 million people? It it's could. Yeah, it's an estimate. Yeah, I honestly yeah. don't know. It could. Have, they said it's somewhere between 5 to 10, so as many as 10, but even five. They were hunters. They were hunters. They did hunt. But here was what's really crazy, too. They didn't have horses. And they didn't have any animals like sheep, goats, donkeys that could carry heavy items. So it was just it was just the men. Everything was by foot. You wanted to tell someone a message. They literally had people whose job was to walk for five miles, connect with someone, tell them the message. They would walk for five miles. <laughs> That's the longest game of telephone. Ever, yeah, bro. it's crazy, right? And it's um, it is really incredible though, uh, what they were able to accomplish. And the area spread about a hundred thousand square miles. Now, to put that in perspective, L.A. County is about 5,000 square miles. So 100, oh, so, so 20 L.A. counties. Yeah. It, so the, California, pretty much. Yeah, big. I mean, it was a big area. Yeah. Now, south of them, what is known as today as Guatemala and some other parts of that mm -hmm. part of the world, that's where the Maya or the Mayans were kind uh, of set up. Okay. The Incas were way down, I believe, by Chile or Argentina. I didn't know any of this, so I started researching the Aztecs. I looked it up specifically so I could like, yeah. I didn't want to mix up who was where. But what's also interesting, so they, the way they settled in this, uh, what is now Mexico City, they have this story in their, um, like their fables of faith, what mm -hmm. they believe in the gods and whatnot. Go back, yeah. Yeah, and the prophecy was that they would be searching and they would find an eagle perched on a cactus, and that would tell them this is where to settle. Ah. And so if you look at the flag of Mexico. Yeah, it's a bird. It's a bird on a cactus grabbing a rattlesnake. Yeah. And that's to pay homage to their sort to of the, origin story. Okay. But the capital city of um god i wish i i watched so many youtube videos pronouncing this name and i still didn't get it right but tenochtitlan or whatever however it's pronounced um as many as 300,000 people they estimated at the time in that time in the world it was five times bigger than london oh wow so it was really big, big. and so it was a very intricate network of canals when the spanish arrived they have writings being like they were blown away no, that's why I was like, when when this when the Spanish people come, start raping and killing. And Cortez shit. showed up in in 1519. Now they there were um, accounts of the Spanish um, meeting these folks before then. Ah, okay. But Cortez showed up in 1519 and fucked everything up. Yeah, yeah. And I'll get that's kind of the last thing I'm gonna get okay. to. I'm gonna kind of right. okay. talk about the people first and their what they did and what they okay. built, and then we'll talk about how. The Spanish ruined right. everything. I'm yeah. just talking, man. You no, know, no, but it's good. But that's, okay. yeah. I just got questions. Please, you know. yeah. Throw them out. But I want to just uh, point out some things that were really cool that they did that were pretty incredible. They were one of the first known societies to have compuls um, compulsory school. I think when you have, like, you're required to go to school. Oh, wow, yes. Yeah, the Greeks had it too, but they were one of the first. And oh, even wow. slaves went to school. Everybody, Everybody went, went to, went school. to school. Yeah. Boys and girls were separated. They had very different roles. The boys... Um, when they were really young, they just learned kind of basic skills of like building and farming mm -hmm. and stuff. Then when they were 12, 13, they went into military training. Yeah, because you only live to 24. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, and uh, one of the things, by the way, about their culture, speaking of, you know, warrior mm -hmm. culture, their version of afterlife was very different than what we think of. And I'll talk about that in detail more in a second. But if you died in war, you were like of the highest caliber. Ah, uh, yeah. So, of course, it would make sense, right? Valor. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, now, one exception for everybody did get military training. But if you were really rich, you could become a priest. So those kids uh, didn't have to fight. Okay. Because that's how things typically work, if you're you know. A priest. Yeah, rich kids can get out of it. Uh -huh. yeah. um, it's called uh, affluenza or... <laughs> Nepotism. Affluenza, you mean, yeah. That, I don't know. I'm fucking high. So. No, it's great. There, there was a famous case. Yeah. And this rich kid killed some people in a DUI accident. And it had to be Texas or Florida, right? Uh, I don't remember the state, okay. but I do. I guarantee you it was Texas or Florida. One of those two. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. Uh, piece of shit kid. Either way, his lawyer somehow successfully argued in court that he wasn't at fault because he suffered from what was known as affluenza, yes. meaning he grew up so, so affluent, affluent he he, what, he couldn't be held responsible. Affluenza, and there's no there's no vaccine for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called make them poor. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But the Aztecs, their warriorhood was real. Like 
lived, breathed, died it. And that was okay. why they're so so famous because okay. they, you know, Aztec. even so much that when little boys were born as babies, like I have a little son right now. Okay. So his toys, he's got some trucks, yeah. he's got some dinosaurs, whatever. They would give toy weapons to the little babies to kind of be like, hey, one yeah, day you're going to yeah. be on the battlefield. Oh, wow, man. So, so it's like Texas and Florida. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Same shit. Um, one of the, um, uh, I believe this is, pronounced the machutil ma ma man i so wish i knew how to pronounce these words dude, and it was the doing a good job. thanks dude i'm trying my best yeah that was like the main weapon of the aztecs and the, what it was mm, was yeah. a long piece of wood uh-huh and they didn't have any uh, metal they had gold and silver but they didn't have hard metals, hard metals like steel and stuff still. but they did have obsidian stone yes i learned about this yes so what obsidian. do you know about obsidian obsidian was like uh that's what they use for like it's like a precursor to, to currency. Like people would buy and, it was, and trade things with obsidian. So they, they would just take it to different places. Yeah, it's a volcanic stone. Okay. And because of its chemical makeup, it can be sharpened 500 times sharper than steel. Yeah. So it is incredibly sharp. The problem is it's not hard like steel. Yeah. So it can't really fight against metal weapons. But they didn't have that until no, the yeah, Spanish so, showed up. Yeah. But so they would have this long three-foot piece of wood, uh -huh. and they would carve grooves in the side and then use tree sap and put sharpened pieces of obsidian all around the side. Uh, so it was like a saw. So oh, you wow. would, you know, um, like wield that in battle uh, and just slice open your chest, your belly, your neck. It was a ruthless weapon. Dude, I'm so glad I'm, I was born. I was born. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I wouldn't last long, man. I'd be like... Guess I'm dying today. Yeah, um, it's really hard to think about. Well, we're going to talk about human sacrifice yeah. in a little bit. That was a huge part of their culture too. You know, it's like anytime I learn about stuff in history, I had a previous episode on Roman gladiators, and same shit. It's like, dude, it's just impossible to fathom yes. that being normal. Yes. But and then I wonder too, like what today is going to be stuff that people look back and be like, yeah, like oh my god, they had to use their hands for their phones. Yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Probably animals eating meat. I think at but, some point that will be looked at as like, a, oh my, how could they? Yeah, but I feel like in the last, I think human history, the last 50 years we have progressed the most. Oh, yeah. Th the fastest. Well, dude, on your 50. Instagram, you were the first one I saw that posted that AI art creator Yeah, thing. yeah, that man. That blew my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a sham too, bro. Dude. And then I just, then I found it and then I spent hours <laughs> I spent hours, bro. So right, it's so crazy because right after you showed me that, my younger brother, out of the blue, sent me some that yeah. same sort of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and he like found it too on some like thread. Yeah. And then another app he showed me, you could put a joke in, and then the AI explained to you why the joke is funny. Oh, I need to. Can you send me that? Yeah, I'll find the video. Yeah. I, that give that to a lot of comedians. <laughs> And be like, yo, this joke ain't funny. Like, I wish that would happen. But it was it was something to the effect of, like, if you did, like, knock, knock, who's there, uh, interrupting Cal, moo. The, the, like, the AI would be like, the joke is funny because during the joke, a cow, which makes moo noises, interrupted you and made the sound that it would make on the farm. Oh, my like, God. Like, it was like, I was like, you that's know. That's a sketch, bro. That's yeah, a, that's it a was sketch. wild. I have my, uh, my, AR, my AI art thing, so I'm going to type up Aztec. And whatever word. I oh, dude, with. yeah, let's do that. That would be great. And then if you can, if you can screenshot it and send it to me yeah. later, I left. A, I'm going to cut it in as like a clip. Okay. They also um, they had a lot of interesting like mental warfare tactics when they would fight. Mm -hmm. They would dress up as leopards and eagles. So they would take the skins of leopards and they would make wood and carve like the faces of ah. birds and leopards like and wear it as a helmet. Have a helmet. And they would have very like smooth. Ah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So you're on, you know think about especially if it's a surprise attack yeah. and you see you're not you know you're frazzled and there's all these like giant leopard eagle things coming yeah. at you making noise flapping their arms <laughs> yeah <laughs> the girl so that was the boys school they, they trained for this a lot is, of that so they're not doing academics no the school is all fighting mostly i mean they also learn stuff like farming techniques okay and, or not they didn't so really survival it's not survival like, yes. yeah they're not yeah, learning yeah. the pythagorean theorem no 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 okay. they're learning how to kill okay yes. and defend yes. and you know yes. and how to run the house well actually the women ran the household so that was girls school what's interesting i thought this was so cool so um singing and dancing was like a re i mean it's part of every culture yes but song is how they told the history of their culture and people so the girls would learn songs that was like keeping alive. The like, then we have like history class now. Yes. It was through song and dance. So there was a big part of that. 
they focused on you know um, how to raise the babies mm -hmm. and that kind of main stuff. What's interesting too, so um, in in that part of the world, you know, they didn't wear a lot of clothing. No, they're, they're in the jungle and whatnot. Mm -hmm. but before like two, three, the kid just ran around naked. They didn't really wear anything. Yeah. And then once girls hit like three, four, they would start wearing a skirt to mm -hmm. cover themselves. What's interesting, boys would wear like certain parts of clothing, but they didn't wear a loincloth until 12 or 13. Oh, wow. Which feels late, right? Yeah, like I guess it was different. So some guys... I'm not judging. Some guys might have schlongs right. at that point. <laughs> but like, yeah. 11 feels late in the game to start covering your dick. Yeah. Uh, but if everyone's got the dick out, it don't matter. I guess. Yeah. yeah. But they interestingly, they had a thing. Um, it was known as the uh, Kwakakala, and that was a dance party where that's when boys and girls would mingle yes. and meet each other. It was like a very planned, planned event. event. And it was for like a lot of times the girls would show the boys the songs and dances they learned in school. Uh -huh. And they would like remember their. And what languages are they speaking? Nahatula, I believe, is the Nah language. Nahatula. Something like that, yeah. yeah Not Spanish. Like... That no. Was, no, 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 no. It was forced on them, yeah. as well as Catholicism yeah, and a lot of other things. All that... Jesus stuff was like, ah, I need Jesus now. Very strict parents, too. They were very... So you can't... Kept you can't their kids in what? line. Okay. So premarital sex, for example, f totally forbidden. Really? Absolutely forbidden. And if you were caught having premarital sex, you would be beaten in public <laughs> by your parents. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Like, and then imagine, like, if that happens, the girl would be like, That's how good my pussy is. <laughs> <laughs> she, you just see her, some guy getting spanked. She's like, mm, yeah. yeah. Was every, did a girl get beat too? I think anybody. Yeah, oh, anyone wow. who. And they had a lot of other punishments. This one is so funny to me. You know, like some parents will make their kids eat soap, put soap in the mouth. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. their version was they would cook hot chili peppers <laughs> over the fire and make the kids stand in and inhale oh, the fumes. Oh my god! Inhale the fumes rather. So they would get the chili smoke in their eyes and their mouth. It was just like. No matter where you are, people corporal, come up with the same thing. Corporate punishment. Corporal punishment, yeah, dude. Corporal. I was like, corp I don't fuck Corporate that. punishment. Corporate. They would love to do that. Corporal? <laughs> corp what is it? Corporal punishment? Corporal punishment. I always thought, why? I always thought it was corporate punishment. Well, it's not that different, but yeah. I'm sure a lot of bosses Ugh. would. Yeah. Uh, Bezos would do that if he could. Yeah. Uh, they also had some things that don't make sense now, but they didn't know better. They thought that it was important to hold a baby by its head, and, it would, <laughs> and that's what helped it grow. Later in life, how many babies lost their heads? <laughs> Probably. Uh, I mean, uh, you have a baby. I have a baby. Yeah, That's like, the last yeah, thing. Like a newborn baby, you could just like blow hard. <laughs> but the thing is, because people eventually grew, they were like, "See, it works." <laughs> they thought it made sense. <laughs> Back to the weapons that the boys used. Um, they didn't have metal, but the armor they would wear. They had cotton padding and leather. Mm -hmm. And well, I thought it was cool. They had blow guns. That blow was guns, like more for hunting than than. But they used them in fighting too. Okay. So it was like a six foot wooden tube mm -hmm. and they would make like feathers and, you know, whatever. They put a poison on it or something? Right. Okay. So the way they got the poison was, I don't know how they figured this out. I would love to know whose job it was to like learn this. Certain frogs secrete poison on their back. Huh. So somebody would have to go and catch the frog. That, some, some guy did some freaky shit with <laughs> yeah. the frog. And had to like get the, I don't know how they got the poison off, but they would rub the dart on it, I uh -huh. guess. Or you yeah. secrete the frog. Are you like? Hold the frog. Oh, and like, that makes sense. And you like have a tube, a thing, and you, God, that's got to be such a dangerous job. You, yeah, I mean, I mean everything. Somebody has to do it, dude. This is how they had to survive. I had a moment today when I was yeah. eating lunch, and like I've been working out, and I've you lost, look good, dude. Thank, thank you, and you too. And I've been, I've been losing weight, and then I was like, I haven't been eating carbs or bread. And then this lady at this Armenian restaurant, she brought me like pita, and like. I was. I wanted to say no. She goes, "You're not going to eat your bread." And I was like, "I gotta," because there's kids out there that don't have bread. That's I was so like, funny. I have to eat this. You gotta bread live, now. dude. Like, yeah, you gotta survive. Yeah, I'm a moderation guy. Yeah. I, there was a brief window. This is before I got married. It was like 2018. I was like, no carbs, barely yeah, any I sugar. That. I remember that. Yeah. I was. I was cut up, but yeah. I was like, it just. It's not sustainable. No, it's not. And that's what I tell people all the time. I'm like, someone. Was uh, I was at the gym and uh, this girl was like, "Would you like to look like that?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> I would not. He, yeah. Like, no, I don't well, need. First of all, I don't need that kind of confidence." The thing, yeah, dude, it's like if you're going out to be in like a Marvel movie, yes, then it makes yes, sense. Yes, but it's like I'm not going to be more interesting at podcasting if I have a six pack. Yeah. Like, so it's like, fuck no. it, you know, I'm already married. Like, yeah, you, you won. You hit yeah. the jackpot. I just honestly at this point health to me is just being able to like chase my son around and not yes, be exhausted yes and your heart still goes yes 100% that's the key so here's what's interesting about their warfare they actually 
didn't try to kill people when they fought them in battle. They, they, had, they did when they had to, but the goal was actually to capture them alive and use them for human sacrifice. Ah, so, yeah, now the plot thickens. Right. Yeah. So one of the th- and this was amongst many reasons. This is also why they weren't super equipped to fight the Spanish because their tactics were like focused on like hitting someone in the leg so they would like couldn't run like yeah. if they had a bow and arrow or yeah. whatever, and then you could capture them. And use them for a sacrifice. Yeah, the Spanish had guns. Too. I mean, this really this d- disease is what killed them. Oh, most. smallpox. Yeah, yeah. But they had guns. They had horses. Um, they had metal armor. Yeah. But on top of all of that, it didn't help that like they had been training specifically for like to, catching people for sacrifice to injure and not to kill. And when your enemy is also trying to do that, yeah. Like there's a joke I've heard a lot of people say it's like karate only works if both people know karate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. feels like that, right? Like if yeah. you're both I've heard like eight comics tell that joke like in two weeks. Yeah. It's, and they all was like, man, I do bit is. I'm like, no. Yeah. It's I've heard like, that since the seventies. Yeah, man. That is one of those things too where it's like I, I kinda just like roll my eyes and laugh when someone when I hear a comic do that, but when somebody acts like they own that joke, yes. then it's sad. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, now it's pathetic. Yeah. Right? If you want to say it, it's part of a setup to a bit, whatever. It's like, hey, you stole that. It's like, nobody stole it. It's, just not, it's not original. It. No, it's not. But these kinds of wars, so they had different, sometimes they fought to defend from getting like an invader, yeah, like the yeah, Spanish. Yeah. But in general, they fought to take the, over shit, to capture people for oh, human sacrifice. sacrifices. Those were known as the flower wars. They were called, I mean, it doesn't sound, it sounds weird, right? Uh, the Flower Wars? The Flower like, Wars. Okay. It was a literal translation. Now, the reason for that was because they would wear very decorative war garb. They'd be very colorful. Okay. And they, you know, there's like fables and tales they would tell that watching the soldiers fall in the field, it's like watching flower petals fall off a flower. Uh, come so on. again, it kind of. Now I get it. I right. see it. The Flower War. Yeah, but it does sound I'm, kind I'm of. I'm putting a Flower War <laughs> into my AI art. Yeah, see what, oh, yeah, that's good. See what that comes up with. Oh, this shit, dude, this art is cool, bro. Yeah. Look what I. That's incredible. I know. <laughs> that is incredible. Come on, man. That's. For those of, I know we talked about it a second ago, but to explain what Mateen is showing me, and I'll cut a picture into a clip on Instagram <laughs> if you're just listening. <laughs> there's, this, there's this app right now. You can just type in words, and we typed in something like Jaguar Eagle Aztec or something. I, I typed in Aztec Eagle Singing Dance. And it came up with a completely original, never before made piece of art. Four of them. Four different pieces. And, and it's I, literally a like warrior bird <laughs> on a mountain, on a, on a, like what looks like an Aztec pyramid yeah. with the sun in the background. With the colors, with the Aztec We're color. fucked, dude. <laughs> Humans are fucked. Like, this is like a brilliant. It's, <laughs> it would take a graphic designer like 40 hours to make that. Oh my god! All right, now I gotta put in Flower War. Yeah, put in this, Flower War. Uh, uh, this is amazing. I know, right? But dude, it really kind of makes me. I mean, the best thing to do is just accept that. Like, what can you do? And just, what can you do, bro? Right. But it is like if none of us have any viable skills. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess it'll. But you know what, dude? I, I. So I smoke a lot of weed. Okay. Um, I'm like a end of the night. My son's asleep. My wife is like, I'm gonna be in charge tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, a responsible yeah. parent. And then I'll have like a joint or two and I like to just relax and think about things, listen to podcasts, whatever. And I was watching these videos Mm -hmm. about the AI and I was thinking about like, you know, there's all this conversation about like wealth disparity, Mm -hmm. the rich keep getting richer, no one's fixing the problem. And then in my kind of high thought, I'm like maybe getting to like the ultimate level of like all jobs are irrelevant. It will like force us to reset the game because currency will have no value. Maybe like maybe it'll get us there. It'll be ugly. It's never clean. No, it's never gonna be clean. But I don't know. Like there's is some. I'm just trying to be optimistic. You know. Yeah. It's either that or then like the Terminator. Yeah. Or it's like literally the Matrix. <laughs> like we're literally batteries <laughs> yeah, in the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have stayed in. I would have stayed in. Fuck that. Yeah. I don't. I, w- I don't want to get unplugged. Yeah. yeah Skynet just comes yeah, in. I just want to stay. Dude, imagine in Skynet there. like doing comedy shows, right? Oh. Like Skynet presents, oh and they have like a Terminator comic. Dude. The ter- <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. Um, okay, they also had a sport. Now, this wasn't totally unique to the Aztecs. This is very common in Mesoamerica, but it was cool, uh, called, I believe it was pronounced Ulamatsali, and it was some. It was kind of a combination between soccer, tennis, and basketball. And they had a rubber ball, and they would kick it with their feet, their hips, their shoulders. They couldn't uh-huh. use their hands. And there was like a, a hoop. Yeah, but it wasn't um, horizontal like we know basketball. It was vertical. 
and the cir- like it was like yeah you know right yeah I think I saw some guys playing this the other day yeah they still do yeah. like games of it sometimes um, but what's crazy the ball was six pounds <laughs> six pounds for the ball so there's like accounts of people would get hit in the head and die in the middle of the game because they probably played with like a rock. It, it was a. It was rubber. It was oh, actually it was a rubber. Ball. Yeah, it was okay. rubber. They had oh. rubber trees, oh, but, okay. but still, six pounds is heavy. Yeah. You know, um, and a lot of times um, they would do these games around like ritual celebrations and religious celebrations, uh-huh. and the losing team was sacrificed to the gods. You know, as part of the, <laughs> uh, or when, at least the team captain. When when I go, <laughs> like, oh my god, I was I would die. Well, yes, I would. Die. I would die. Yeah. Um, now, occasionally, the game was to settle disputes. So let's say, like, you were the leader of a tribe, yes. and I was the leader of a tribe, and we're fighting about something. Ah. Instead of us letting our people get killed, we agree. It's like, listen, I'm gonna have all your concubines if I beat you yeah. in this game, or vice versa. Yeah. So that was a very common thing. <laughs> we get all your bitches. Yeah. Uh, that was in lots of parts of the world, which yeah. I th- it that also gives me hope that like ultimately humans can work it out because we. Everybody had concubines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no that's, matter where you in history. Where that's you so, at, yeah. Everyone has concubines. Well, one of the kings, Montezuma, we're going to talk oh. about him in a bit. Dun, 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 he dun, dun. was reported to have one main wife. He had a, like a key wife uh-huh. and then about 150 concubines. Oh, wow. That were in his circle. That's a lot of. That's a lot of yeah, fun. but I did this episode last season about um, Ramses in ancient Egypt, and he had as many as a thousand, yeah. what they said. But I mean, Dude, can you imagine the the stench? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you wouldn't notice it because it was like because everyone smelled. I yeah, guess. like oh, uh, oh. But but when I hear stories about like when they would settle instead of going to war, they would settle disputes that way. It gives me hope, and they're like, we're all gonna die in a nuclear war. It's like historically, yeah. We we just, we like this is not the same exactly. But yeah. you look like I'm gonna lose like thousands of men, or we'll just do it this way. We and barter. People can yeah, live. let's figure it out. Our resources. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, the people gambled during the games. They actually had board games at the time, too, so it's pretty cool. Interestingly, also, chocolate came from this part of the world. It was a very big part of their uh, culture. But not the chocolate as we know it. No, 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 no. very different. Yeah. Um, the Spanish added sugar and made yeah. it sweet. Yeah. Cho- cho- um, the cacao bean is very bitter, uh-huh. and they actually would drink it. They would crush it up and mix it with other like spices and drink ah. it as like a frothy drink. Um, it's actually a wedding drink. It's pretty common mm. at a wedding to drink uh, chocolate. They believe chocolate was a god. Or it was a gift from the god of wisdom. Um, other, a lot of interesting. Does the, does the chocolate plant get you high too? Like, is that mm-hmm. where? No, but they did have a lot of psychedelic drugs. So, so like, c- cocaine doesn't come from chocolate. What cocaine comes from? That, from coca. coca. So cacao is chocolate. Oh. Okay. Coca is cocaine. Dude, I didn't the whole fucking <laughs> time, bro. <laughs> I thought that chocolate and cocaine yeah. came from the same place, and it just like yeah, some you throw some bleach in it, and it's that's like, so funny. You throw it up your nose, and then you put sugar. Cocaine oh. chocolate sounds like an album <laughs> uh, special. Cocaine chocolate, yeah, no, that's the name of my new album. Cocaine chocolate. <laughs> there you go, dude. Cocaine actually comes from a little bit farther south. That's more like yeah, Colombia, like Columbia, and, yeah, South America. Um, but yeah, they there's like stories of um, dude. I didn't. I, Cacao and coca. Fuck. Yeah. You ever see like on a chocolate bar, it's like 80% cacao, 70% cacao. Yeah, now it makes sense because it was 80% right. fucking If it's co- 80% coca, yeah. <laughs> that's a good chocolate yeah, bar. That's a good, uh, um, it's a heart attack. Yeah. They did have psychoactive drugs. Okay. They uh, had to. Everyone, yeah. Like, Psilocybin, yeah. salvia, um, other things that we don't totally know what they were. But they understood the importance of restricting it. Because they knew that, like, everybody can't just be... High all the time. Right. Also, they felt that way about alcohol. They understood. Alcohol was actually incredibly regulated. The priests were allowed to have it. and Because I guess it, it, might, it took so long to make it that they, it, was, it became a high, high resource, right? Uh, well, more so from what historians think is that because it would make people act like idiots. Okay. And you would get drunk. Dude, history. You would hurt yourself. Yes, it does. Because think about it, right? You get drunk and you break your leg. That's a death sentence. Yeah. You know? And then you just become a human sacrifice. <laughs> right. Like, that's what would happen. Actually, uncle. <laughs> a lot of times people who volunteered, they thought they had something wrong with them. Oh, my God. Because they actually found a tower of skulls. Um, this was discovered, this is one of my later cards, but I think I remember it. Um, 2015, I believe, they were doing some excavations in Mexico City. 
and they found buried in the ground a 600 tower of human <laughs> skulls. Damn. Because they would, after the sacrifice, they would put the skull in this tower, and part of it was to kind of show, like, the flex yeah, yeah, of yeah, how yeah, strong yeah, the empire yeah, was. Yeah. But when, anthrop- when archaeologists were studying the skulls, they noticed that a lot of them looked like they had dental deformities, ah. like maybe they were suffering from gum disease okay. or something really painful, so they sacrificed That's themselves. Because they couldn't deal with the pain. Right. And they're like, hey, at least I get to honor the gods. Yeah, maybe I'll go to heaven. So actually, they did believe that you went to a special heaven. God, you, the cavity is killing me. Kill yeah. me, please. Um, they also, uh, and I don't judge them for this. They ate a lot of bugs. It was part of their culture. Oh, yeah. It's, you know. Um, but that's why, in, even in today in Mexico, you'll find bugs. Yeah, on, like, I, I've, I've eaten bugs in Mexico City. How was it? It was good. It was just like crispy, crunchy. And then they, they I mean, they pump so much fucking mm-hmm. seasoning on it. That's yeah. what you just would say. Uh, it's probably not bad. They, they would. Uh, have you been to Mexico City? Mm-mm. I'd love to go. It's my, it's my, it's my number one international city. Really? Yeah, I've been. Have you all been to a lot of places? Yeah, I've been a lot of places. Yeah, seen a lot of faces. What makes, <laughs> what makes uh, Mexico City your favorite? I just the culture, the food, the people, um, the tequila. I really like tequila and yeah. mezcal, and like, I, I went down. I think my expectation was so low mm-hmm. going to Mexico City because yeah. you hear all these bad things about Mexico, like sure. Oh, and, and my. My mom at the time, she was like, "You didn't need to be careful there. The cartel yeah. is doing all this." I'm like, "Well, the cartel's the cartel. Go fuck with me." I don't think the like, cartel's yeah, kidnapping yeah, like random yeah, Americans. Yeah, or like they're not gonna get any money from a from a from a six four black dude, <laughs> that, that, yeah. that, that comedian. Like, right? What are you gonna get from me? That's so funny. Two drink tickets. That's what you're gonna get. They, somebody but, hacks your Instagram. Like, if you want Mateen back, <laughs> you need to send. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, well last Mexico City question because we are technically talking about Mexico City. Yeah, yeah, here. we are. It's cool. Um, I'm sure I'll go one day. What's like the spot? What's like restaurant, club, whatever? Uh, like? the, the spot is um, uh, King Fishers. It's just like a seafood place. Yeah. And then um, there's this um, fuck. I can't think of the name. It's this really good Michelin. So I think it's called Pujul. Okay. Pujul. Like when you go, yeah, you got to go to Pujul. Pujul. It, yeah. I'm gonna look P-U-J- it up. P U J Oh, L. It's nice. it's a really great restaurant, like really good, like fine uh, Mexican food. And then yeah. you got to go to uh, Chichazitza. Yeah, Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. That was a Mayan uh, temple. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. like right outside yeah, of yeah, yeah. Mexico City. Yeah. What's interesting is there's a lot of, uh, when you get into like the ancient alien theories, yeah. I don't know if I really believe in that, but because they had pyramids in that yeah. part of the world and the Egyptians had them and yeah. they were built very similar. I mean, they, yeah, they were built very similar. So they're like, how did they know? You know, I'm like, I think it was just circumstance. I don't Well, yeah, I mean, if you figure it, I mean, if you say you need a, a structure like this, right. people yeah. are going to figure out, oh, yeah, like we need to. We need to build this. Oh, one thing also in Mexico City, yeah. you can go to Frida Kahlo's house. Okay. Casa de Azul. Yeah. yeah, nice. I've only been to Tijuana, which I know is not really oh, like. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I aware. I got some places to go there too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I won't. I wouldn't, re- I didn't really like it. Because you know what it was? I, I mean, no disrespect to Tijuana, I guess, but you know, I went because it's right over the border. It's very easy to get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And I hours. just felt like I was like, I almost wish I could have experienced Mexico without Tijuana. This, yes, because you know? it's not really Mex- it's like Tijuana. it's like a dirty, dirty it's, place. It, it felt like if like someone came into America and just went to like the worst shitty version of Vegas or something. So it's what I tell people Tijuana is is Mexico's Reno. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> and if that's the only city, you're like, oh, man. Like, like, oh, yeah. I guess we got to go. This is really interesting, too, about their culture. I found fascinating. They had a one-time forgiveness law where if you did something terrible, you could confess to a priest and you would be totally forgiven as long as you weren't caught yet. So <laughs> if they caught you, too late. Oh, my God, dude. That is hilarious. But you only had one. Uh, <laughs> only one. <laughs> So you got to decide if it was really yeah, worth oh it, my right? God. Like, oh, I got to kill this bitch. <laughs> you kill him. Like, hey, man, I killed this bitch. Sorry. I'm really so, yeah. yeah it's like, so funny. <laughs> they had thousands of gods. Um, there were like five to ten, like, main ones. Um, but a lot of their stories about how um, their gods worked, sort of similar to how people believe in, like, there's the, or some people of, like, you know, Christian, Jewish, Muslim yeah. faith, I guess. There's, like, the devil and there's God mm-hmm. and whatever. They had the similar sort of good evil forces, but there were like thousands of them. Okay. And so it wasn't like one is un- in charge and one is safe. They were just equal. They were all just like constantly fighting for. So one fable they had is that like the moon god and the sun god would fight back and forth every day. Yeah. And so that's why. I always think know. of these stories like that. It's like one drunk guy at a bar telling these stories. <laughs> yeah. And that's how 
centuries of like and they just keeps going yeah it's just like that's what it that's what it starts well you got to also think they didn't they had sort of written language it was more similar to like hieroglyphics they okay. didn't have like how we have it the, from what i read it sounded like a hybrid between like just images and then um the best way i can describe it you know how like if somebody writes in all caps it's like they're shouting yeah something like that where you can okay. sort of give tone ah, to gotcha. the images right so, so like be like fuck you or like fuck you <laughs> right exactly <laughs> But so I was just, I mentioned that to say that like, you know, you can imagine that plus like hundreds of years of telling it through singing, some lyrics are going to get changed yeah. here and there, you yeah. know. Now this part's cool. They also had a lot of very um, interesting traditions around weddings. Mm -hmm. Now you've done a lot of weddings. I've done a lot of weddings, man. You are the number one rated wedding officiant in all of California. Yes, I'm the number one rated uh, officiant on Thumbtack in California. Yeah, man, that's me. Married by my teen, if you get married. Just hit me up on Instagram. Check it out. We, my wife and I were going to have you marry us, yes. but then COVID. Then COVID happened. And we just had like a really tiny family yeah. thing. Yeah. But uh, it would have been great. Yeah. I, I, I was stoked. But, you know, that whole COVID thing kind of yeah. fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, married by Bettine. Check it out. Um, okay. So men could have multiple wives. Of course. Women did not. That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, they can't have multiple wives or no. multiple husbands. No, 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 no. So it wasn't one of those communities. Because I've heard some communities in the, like, South American where like the woman is just like the town for all the men and all the men have sex with her and then they, they um, raise up the, they all raise the baby together or some shit. I don't think the Aztecs did that. Okay. I didn't read about that in my research. No, not them, but like, Oh yeah. They, in some cultures. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I know that there's some culture, uh, I don't remember what country somewhere in Asia where the children are raised by the mom and the mom's brothers uh, and the the father of the kids doesn't raise the kids. Okay. It just feels so weird, yeah, but you know, weird. it's whatever. I, mean, I won't yuck anybody's yum, you know. <laughs> yeah, if it works for them, you yeah. know, if it works for them. Yeah. Um, I there's anything wrong with that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Typically, men were married by twenty, women fourteen to fifteen, okay. and a lot of it was done through matchmaking. Ah, okay. um, match they didn't do a ton of, um, you know, yeah. flirting and hanging courting, out. No, because I mean, you got to think what, about where's this? Is this a sixteen hundreds or fifteen hundreds? Um, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundreds. Okay, yeah, because like romance didn't come into like Shakespeare and all those. Yeah, Marlowe and all those guys. Just... Um, and also, if you did cheat, death punishable. Both yeah. men and women, or mm -hmm. no? Oh yeah, yeah. So they didn't fuck around with cheating. Now you could have multiple wives, but you better wife her up before you have sex with her. Oh, because they don't believe in premarital sex either. Correct. Yeah. Ah. So adultery. Yeah. Death. Now yeah. I don't. Again, keep in mind the exact representation of this history is a little spotty. So does yeah. that mean that like a husband caught his wife cheating and killed her because he was pissed? Yeah. Or was it like the communal judgment was like you must die? But either way, it was like really frowned upon. Yeah. Somebody like, got their feelings hurt. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but during a wedding ceremony, the bride would wear a special uh, wedding cape. And then she would climb on the back of one of the elder women in the town. A lot of times it was either the matchmaker who set her up mm -hmm. or the groom's mother. And she would be given a piggyback ride to the groom's house. Ah. And then she would deliver her to the groom's house. <laughs> and then the mother of the bride would actually dress the groom in his clothing uh -huh. and feed him a special meal that was part of their wedding traditions. Um, and if it was a man's first wedding, it was a really big celebration. Yeah. If it was a secondary wife, they didn't want really to do a whole lot. Oh, wow. they're like, ah, fuck you, number two. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I. So you can have mo you can have two, or you can have as many as you as want. As many as you want. Oh, okay. There didn't seem to be rules. I think it's like as many as you could provide. Provide for. for. Okay. Now, what also happened a lot? Let's say you were a woman with children, and your husband died in a war, was captured. Yeah. You probably would marry another man. Who be like wife two three or something? Okay. So that like you have a man. You have sort a man of, who can take care of you. Yeah, it's pretty common yeah. in you know yeah, history. Um, but the interesting thing is um, the heirs from the man's wealth mm -hmm. only went to his children of his first wife. <laughs> oh my god, that sucks. Man. Like they could have split it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but weddings were a really big deal because that signified that you were an adult of the community. Okay. So it was a really like I said before, like they didn't do premarital sex. They got married fairly young, and that was what it was considered that's like. In, that's insane. Yeah. And so the, the community really came together and kind of it was a really big part of their um, culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the reasons that the Spanish went over and invaded Spain was because they heard. You know, I don't know how they first learned about the gold there, but they were going for gold and silver. Ah, and that was the main thing they wanted to they go wanted after. to rape 
Open pillage yes. and bring on disease. Now, the Spanish crown was in a ton of debt in Europe. They were like going bankrupt and they owed a lot of money. Uh -huh. So they sent out the uh, conquistadors to be like, hey, go find us yes. something to bring back to pay off these debts. Which again, it's just like the same shit. It's like the, whether it's that or like the banking crisis or whatever. Yes. It's like, uh, we fucked up the money, but just go ruin the some other people's lives. Yeah. So we can. That's I mean, literally what it is. It's yeah. so fucked, dude. Yeah. But it's just like human history. Anyway. Anyway, Conquistadors. This, the Aztecs thought it was hilarious that they were so obsessed with gold because, like, Aztecs used gold, but it wasn't. They, it it wasn't. They had no monetary value. No, they didn't. So they didn't have any money the way we think of yeah. it. It was all a barter system. Yeah. But the most precious thing in their culture was exotic bird feathers. Those were very hard to get. They would use them for like ceremony. It was like jewelry yeah, today, yeah, right? Yeah. The actual literal word, the translation of the word for gold in their native tongue translates to shit from the sun <laughs> and sun shit. I'm sorry. I got all this sun shit. On <laughs> yeah. Just flexing sun <laughs> shit. And they, I mean, they used it for some stuff. Like they would put gold shavings in food. They thought that there were medicinal benefits of it, yeah. but they just thought it was, they were like Nick, they would have like running jokes about <laughs> that. the Spanish is like, it would be the, the, the thing. Like, it would be like if somebody came to America and was obsessed with like, jeans just like denim jeans yeah, anywhere yeah we're like yeah they're i mean they're nice but whatever <laughs> no we need to eat these jeans. yeah um there's even stories that like um there were times when the spanish were being chased during warfare by the aztecs and they ended up drowning because they had so much gold they were trying to keep oh, wow. that they died running away and they were like no keeping you know greed it will yeah. kill you um they also had very strict rules about what clothing you could wear um in their culture so if you were a wealthy person, you were allowed to have on um, feathers, furs. They would wear gold jewelry. Okay. We didn't think of gold jewelry like how in America. It's yeah, just, yeah. It just looked nice. There wasn't, you know, it wasn't like here, but they wore it as jewelry. It was, um, yeah, but it was like a, like a status thing. Status. Yeah, yeah. No the feathers thing. was the main thing. Yeah, okay. But if you were a commoner, you just could only wear like your basic loincloth. You okay. weren't allowed to uh, show you off. You can't stunt. Yeah. Complex. You can't um, have three chains. Ah. So this I found really fascinating. So they had four versions of the afterlife. Okay. Now, so was it different levels, like a video game? Kind of. So in like the Abrahamic religions, you tend to think of like if you're a good person, you go to heaven. Yeah. If you're a bad person, you go, go to, to hell. hell. That didn't exist at all. It was 100% based on how you died is where you ended up. <laughs> so there was no sense of like, more like good bad morality like we think of it i mean they had things that were wrong but they didn't have this like if you're a bad person you're punished in the afterlife that only related to how you, you died so, if so you got sacrificed so if you got sacrificed or if you died in war you went to one place in the afterlife yeah. and they and again keep in mind the aztecs and many cultures in south america and mesoamerica didn't really travel the way a lot of like europeans did yeah now the theory behind that is because it's much more vertical continent versus horizontal so that kind of um with weather patterns and uh -huh. geography and stuff they tended to like kind of stay relatively in their areas yeah and they didn't have horses either so yeah that's i was thinking that they didn't have horses right yeah. um so they would just say like you went to the afterlife in the west in the north in the it was kind of just yeah. somewhere over there we've never been to also there was a separate afterlife for women who died during childbirth uh, they had a it was a very common thing as you that, can imagine. yeah because it's it's still pretty intense i mean it was you know every everybody's great now but when my wife birthed our son i'll put it this way if we weren't in the 21st century in the hospital we would have had some serious problems same yeah yeah so thank you ob science and science and doctors doctors and, yeah anesthesiologists shout out to dr chin uh, <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Edu at uh, Spectrum Women's Hospital. Or no, he's somewhere else now. But either way, Dr. Edu, you did a great job, sir, uh, if you ever hear this. Yeah. Um, they thought also, uh, they did believe in reincarnation. Yeah. And they thought if you um, were killed as a uh, warrior, you would be reincarnated as an exotic bird. Oh, so, so not even a person, but that you, you become somebody that... Something that they want of high status. Yeah, but I, they revered these birds, you know. Yeah, like yeah, it was very special to them. So they didn't kill them. They just took their feathers. Um, I, I guess they probably did kill them. Yeah. They must have killed them. I don't think they caught them, took the feathers, and let them go. I don't know. I just know that they said that there was um, a special, like, that's one of the ways you could come back. Now, you, okay. you would also come back as a person, too. Okay. Um, it was like a four year cycle. Like, you would be ah. there for four years. And then yeah. um, this I found really fascinating. Um, so, to recap real quick. So, Heaven one, or afterlife rather, one is for like warriors and sacrifice mm -hmm. people. Number two is women who died during childbirth. Yes. Number three is people who died from drowning or being struck by lightning. <laughs> that means that shit happened all the 
time. Right. If yeah. It, if that's the thing. <laughs> and other things that happen. Basically, if you were young and died of something tragic, okay. those were the two main things. Okay. And then number four was if you made it to old age, you had a the, like that was the last <laughs> you, afterlife. You made it to the life. You, you life. But when you got there, there were eight levels of challenges that involved climbing up an obsidian mountain and fighting off wild beasts. So, so you die, and then you got to do a <laughs> ninja warrior. <laughs> and then you get to the final level, and then your soul finally gets to rest. <laughs> Crazy, so, right? They were doing so many drugs to come up with all this shit. Oh, yeah, bro. dude. Peyote dude, and all that kind of ayahuasca. There's just for- some guy just making <laughs> this shit up. Yeah, but, I mean... It's no more ridiculous than like Moses part no, in the Red Sea. Every, everything's ridiculous, yeah, bro. Yeah, everything yeah. is a superhero movie. Bro. Yeah, for sure, dude. Everything, um, every religion, superhero movie. So human sacrifice is was you know that was a big part of a <laughs> lot of culture over there. Now there were a few reasons for that. So they their um, creation story. They believe that they were in the fifth version of creation. Okay. There have been four before them and because the gods were angry and didn't have enough blood given back to them, mm-hmm. they kept destroying the world. So every 52 years, they thought that that could be the end. They did sacrifices all the time. Uh-huh. But it was like, we need to keep sacrificing to the gods or else, well, there could be a drought. There could be something else terrible. So They were killing people to stop the gods. They were sacrificing to the gods. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to please the gods. Um, there were different types of sacrifices. But the most common sacrifice was they would cut the chest open mm-hmm. and pull the heart out. Oh. Yeah, and the oh. and the priest would eat it. You're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the blood would kind of run down the steps yeah. of the pyramid mount. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. I'm, it's not good. This is not apo- apocalypto. Is what? That's Mayans. Oh, Mayans. Okay, but All right. a little bit farther south. Okay, different culture, but similar. Yeah, yeah. a little close. So, Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. That was Mayan. Mayans, okay. Yeah, the Aztecs are Mexico City. Okay. Yeah. And Mayans are just east of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southeast. Southeast, yeah. Um, they, if you had a dog, they would sacrifice your dog as well. Oh, wow. Because they thought it would take care of you in the afterlife. Ah. So the intention was good. At least they were, they were nice. They're like, listen, you need, like, y'all yeah, are Man's homies. best friend is man's best friend. <laughs> yeah. So there was uh, a neighboring city called Klaxcala and... It was it really interesting is that like the way the kingdom worked, they basically used the city as a human sacrifice farm. Mm. So they were independent, quote unquote, but they could have like gone and conquered them and just brought them in. But they'd rat they kind of were like, no, we're not like we're going to have all our people sacrifice. And then they would just do these wars and round up people and sacrifice them and stuff. Um, They also so the different types of sacrifice would match with which gods they were trying to pay homage to. Okay. So there was one god where the way they would sacrifice the person, they would push them into a pit of coals. Like beca- hot coals. Hot coals, okay. yeah. Like they would make a big fire, get it down to coals, and put the person into the coals uh, because they thought that the, something with fire and whatnot with the god, that's what the god wanted. Oh, the um, smell. The smell. There was uh. also a story that they honored another God where the sacrifice I guess you would say they would have like a rope tied to their leg and then it'd be mm-hmm. tied to like a giant heavy stone. And they were given like a wooden shield and a stick and they had to fight off like a bunch of warriors with like full garb on uh, and they were dressed as other gods. So it was to sort of like retell the story. And they just killed this dude. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a rope tied around his, to a rock. Yep. So he couldn't move. So he, he was, was stuck. Yeah. And they gave him like a shield to make it entertaining. Yeah. But basically they They're just, just beating him. Yeah. And you know what's in, what's crazy about that is um I did an episode on Roman gladiators. Part of gladi- gladiatorial games would do similar things. Like they would retell Greek fables in the arena and they would like have like a prisoner. I, yeah. yeah, like there's one um I think it was uh Icarus had his um guts ripped out by a bird or I don't know, some whatever, right? Yeah. There was some story where somebody had their guts ripped out by a yeah. bird. So they would tie a guy to like a post, cut his belly open, and then train a hawk to fly in and rip out <laughs> his guts. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, People are sick. Humans are sick. They, they were. But what's crazy is, see, the difference is the Romans thought it was just for entertainment. <laughs> the Aztecs thought it was to like keep, helping people to keep the gods yeah, happy yeah, yeah. um this one dude this i mean they're all terrible but this one is like so like oh fuck man this is awful so they thought let me ask you a oh, question what do you think Answer. for this question so when there was a drought what did you think that they would do to try and like fix the drought situation uh they would uh drink people's blood 
they wouldn't drink people's blood, but they thought that tears uh-huh. would help fix the drought. So they would specifically try and get the torturee, or excuse me, the victim, but the, whatever, yeah. to cry as much as possible oh, wow. to get the cure of the drought. So they would like slice them with the obsidian and really try uh, and stretch it out. And the thing is too, that like while this is happening, they're like singing and dancing <laughs> and it's, it's, it was like a party. I mean, they yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. now some people did go voluntarily because yeah. maybe they were in like terminal, terminally sick or either they had um, like- They're just down, they're just loyal soldiers. Right, but a lot of times they were prisoners of war okay. or they just were like, you know, somebody fucked up. And so the one of those poor, unfortunate souls. Yeah. Oh, and this is interesting too, um, because people believe they were going to the afterlife. So it was common for people to give them messages to relay. So they were like, hey, you know, my brother's over there. When you get there, could you tell him X, yeah, Y, Z? Like, yeah. So, tell him, fuck him. <laughs> tell him I'm fucking his wife. So this one is really interesting. And again, they all go to like different sacrifices for certain. Um, religious and uh, stories from their history. So there was a god named Tezcatecopa, I believe. And so the story went <clears throat> that um, once a year, a man would be chosen to play this god for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Like he's going full method actor, yeah, all yeah. right? He wears a certain costume. He has a residency, a yeah. god residency. Right, plays a flute, yeah. dances, goes to, travels around and like tells the story and it's this whole thing. And then at the end of his run, he goes to the top of the pyramid, <laughs> They break the flute in half and then cut his heart out oh and my eat God. it. And then they choose the next person <laughs> who gets to be that person. Next. Like imagine like that's your that's <laughs> yeah, your gig, yeah. right? You're the guy that <laughs> dies after the, at a year. It's bro. just got to be so hard, like going around doing that for a year. Like <laughs> you just know it's like, oh, uh, man, all right, yeah. tomorrow that's it. Yeah. Let's look, yeah. Um, look at my heart. Oh my God. Have, have there not been any movies about these people? No, I don't think so. Apocalypto yeah. was the one about the Mayans, yeah. but uh, but a lot of this kind of stuff is, has inspired the Mexican Day of the Dead. If you're familiar okay. with that celebration, Dia de Muertes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and Zomponte is what they, is what they call that um, skull tower okay. that they found. Now, I do have to preface by letting you know this full disclosure: it is possible that everything I just told you is bullshit. Okay. <laughs> and, hey. <laughs> And the reason is because almost everything we know about the culture comes from how the Spanish told it. <laughs> so we don't really know <laughs> to what extent. Oh, my God. It was kind of so say the whole time. <laughs> um, there was a book. This is, this is almost hilarious. It's almost like ironic. This is what it was called. In 1568. Uh, this is like 20 years after they conquered the Aztecs. Mm-hmm. There was a book written called The True History of the Conquest of New Spain. And you would imagine that if you are conquering a people, you're not going to like highlight how great they were. And mm-hmm. you're going to try and paint them as like barbarians. And, and mm-hmm. that's really what they did. Yeah. So it's hard to know um, for sure. But so one example of how they're like, OK, some of this is for sure bullshit. There was a story that was told that over a four day period, the Spanish quote unquote, witnessed um, 80,400 people sacrificed over four days. Now, if you do the math on that, that would mean that for 96 hours straight without stopping, they killed 14 people a minute. Seems a little exaggerated. That is seem a little exaggerated. Historians think they probably were killing like four thousand a year or so. Okay. Still a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> but like four thousand. But like eighty. It's a little bit different. They did eighty four thousand yeah. in three days. Uh, yeah. Now um, Montezuma. I don't know if you've ever heard dun, that dun, name before. Dun, 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 yeah. It's it's the, it's a very common term now. So Montezuma was like the first great oh, Mont- king. I've had Montezuma's revenge. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, the first time the name was used was when he was kind of the first great king, uh, the great leader of the uh-huh. Aztecs. He set up a system of taxes, schools. Um, he also um, set up a code of laws about women's rights. Domestic violence wasn't allowed. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he was like Montezuma was like full on. Yeah. He was he's an ally. Yeah. He had 150 concubines. I be fucking no. But yeah. He be fucking. Um, and then later Montezuma the second which was his great grandson. Okay. So there were a few other leaders in between. Yeah. He was um, kind of like next in line, at, you know, a few generations later mm-hmm. to take over. But unfortunately, he was the one who ultimately led to the downfall of, of the Aztecs. Aztecs. Now, is it really his fault? It's not really fair. What to was say her that. name? <laughs> Cortez. <laughs> Cortez was her name. He, he, Cortez came in and <laughs> fucked it all up. But during Montezuma, too, he doubled the size of the empire, actually. Okay. Um, 
historians think he had a hundred or so children of his own mm -hmm. um, from all his concubines. Um, and what's interesting, so in the beginning, when Cortez, and keep in mind, they didn't really, um, they hadn't really seen um, the Aztecs specifically. Other parts of Mesoamerica had seen Spanish. The mm -hmm. Aztecs had not yet. So when Cortez arrived, they thought they were gods because yes. it was one of their stories that like a white-skinned god will arrive in a magical way. Can you imagine? And so, yeah. And they just see, and just like, they were like aliens. Yeah. I mean, they had never seen white skin. They yeah. had never seen horses. They had never seen the kind of metal weapons that they had. They were like gods. Yeah. Um, so Cortez first showed up in 1519. Now, here's what's interesting about Cortez. He was not supposed to be in Mexico. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> like, they yeah. never go where they're supposed to go, bro. Right? <laughs> he was like Columbus, right? Yeah. yeah. He was in Cuba, and then he fucked up. He got fired from his job in Cuba. And then he stole a bunch of ships, and he was like, I'm going to prove myself. I'm going to go to this other place and show Spain I can redeem myself. So he showed up, and um, Cortez was very sneaky <sighs> because he went around and realized that Cl that group, the Claxcala, who were sort of like the— Like um, Calexico, right? Yeah. Like, like Plexico? Plexico no, Burst? Calexico. Calexico is oh, oh, a Cal city. Oh, okay. Calexico Mex in Mexico. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, he went to that group, the Claxcala, who were sort of like the human sacrifice uh -huh. group, and he was like, hey— um, if you guys work with us, we can fuck up the Aztecs. So he figured out that the Aztecs were like the top rulers uh -huh. and then went to their like kind uh, of rivals. Divide and conquer, bro. Yeah, very smart, right? Um, he also, have you ever heard the phrase burn the ships? You know yes. That, that comes from Cortez because his men wanted to get out of there and he was like, no, 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 we're going to do this. So he burned the boats and forced his conquistadors to do this with him. Uh. Um, eventually... He had an army of a hundred thousand. With he only had a few hundred Spanish, but with the other oh, with the with the with the people, the with, traitors, with the enemies of the Aztecs, the, the Benedict Arnold. Yeah, he tricked them. Yeah, so he had, he raised about a hundred thousand strong. Oh wow! Um, but honestly, what really fucked up the Aztecs was smallpox and dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> that All this is like mm, these yeah. diseases. Um, yeah, it killed some. This is. I mean, it's funny because it's so. It's like it's not funny, but did, did it, you did you look up how smallpox works? I didn't look up how smallpox works. I did look up um, another disease that came later. Oh, they thought they had salmonella, and that would make you bleed out of your eyes yeah. and your mouth and your nose. I, I don't. Do you know how smallpox so works? So smallpox is a. It's it's literally boils on your skin, <sighs> and then what happens is the when they they grow in the blister, and when they pop. Ugh. It goes everywhere else, and then if it just gets on you, yeah, you're gonna get it. So oh like, my god, like dude. twelve guys would just get it, and another twelve guys, like every twelve days, hundreds of thousands of people dude, were getting it. Yeah. That is like a thousand times worse what? than COVID. Yeah, like that's when like it's all relative. You know what I mean? Yeah, like for sure. Can you imagine like if monkeypox had COVID's effects and was as like we would get rid of that shit because it's all the sticks. Yeah. But like back in the day, they didn't even know, man. Yeah, I mean, they probably thought it was angry gods. Yeah, you know. Um, the Spanish also, they were very, I mean, they understood warfare in a way that the Aztecs didn't because again, the Aztecs were focused on like capturing people yeah, for sacrifice. Yeah. So the Spanish realized, so, so, um, the city that, they, that the Aztecs lived in the main city, it was very isolated. Mm -hmm. They were very protected. So then the Spanish figured out how to shut off their water supply and their food supply because the Aztecs had an incredible system of aqueducts mm. and irrigation. Like, so whole, was, like Pipes and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with like like trenches and stones yeah. and stuff. And the Spanish were like, oh, we'll just fuck that up. And then, you know, <laughs> that's it. So um, oh, Montezuma got overthrown by his own people because they were pissed. They were like, dude, you... Because he was nice. To, he tried to make amends Men's with, with, with the Spanish. Yeah. And then... Cortez figured out, like, great, I'm going to trick this guy. I'm yeah. going to make him think we're going to work with him. And then he went to his neighbors. He was like, hey, we're going to fuck this dude up. So then this, the, the Montezuma, the seconds, people were like, you blew it, dude. But by, 18, by August. So they had an uh, uh, insurrection. Yes, literally, <laughs> yes. They stormed the Capitol. They, they, uh, they, they killed him. Um, but. Um, Where's Nancy Pelosi? 1521. <laughs> the Aztec Empire officially surrendered to the Spanish because uh. it was game over. It took two years. That was it. Two years from, from contact to the fall. They, these people build up 200 years of shit, but it goes, and it fell in two years. But again, that goes to show you how quickly yeah. it can all crumble. Yeah. There was one story of an epic final battle where they kidnapped 70 of the Spanish conquistadors and cut their hearts out and ate them all. Uh. Um, but uh, unfortunately, um, once the Spanish took over, they destroyed everything and built what is now Mexico City. Yeah. And they only wanted white 
Spanish people in there because mm. that's human history, unfortunately. So a lot of what was there, we don't know. We just have ideas from what was written. Well, there's some stuff still in Mexico. There's, there's some yeah, stuff left yeah, over, yeah, 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 but from... Um, they just took down the Christopher Columbus statue. Yeah, yeah, which seems appropriate. It was in the middle of the, like, the, middle of the city. In there's Mexico? A, yeah, in Mexico City. Wow, it's almost it's, amazing it's been there this long. Yeah. You know, but... The Christopher Columbus statue. Well, that's the Aztecs, man. Oh, man, well, thank you, bro. I didn't know none of that shit, bro. Yeah. I knew a little bit because I just, I just watched some shit about about all that shit, man. So I don't know all the, the ins and outs and why they was killing people, man. Yeah. Well, now we know. We know. So, uh, Mateen, it's been great having you on here. Thank you, man. I'm still high. <laughs> Remind everybody how they can uh, check you out, support you, all that uh, stuff. My name is Mateen Stewart. Uh, it's M-A-T-E-E-N-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. I'm Mateen Stewart everywhere, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, yeah, I'm at Mateen Stewart. So check me out. Hell yeah. Check him out. He's very funny. Very, very funny. Uh, And I've been your host, Alex Getlin. We will see you next time. Boom.